submission has become a trigger word lately. A lot of people perceive it differently. In this video, we're going to be looking at what submission is not, what submission is based on biblical principle, and how you can get your wife to submit to you effortlessly. So without wasting of time, let's get right on. Submission is not domestic slavery, like some people perceive it, especially in a place like Africa. You know, there is this general notion that a woman is supposed to cook and clean and do all of the, you know, all of the house chores. Even when she has a nine to five job, she's still expected to do all of these duties. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's bad to do all of those. It's actually okay. I mean, every sensible lady, every sensible woman will find a way around that, even if she can't do it herself, especially the the cleaning and all of that she can get someone to assist in doing all of those things to some people submission to them just means that a woman should just be there for her husband you know anytime they want to have sex anyhow anywhere she should just be ready and be there she should cook for him clean for him for to them that is what submission is all about but i tell you in this video that is not what submission is all about we've been getting it all wrong so that takes me to my next point which is what is submission based on biblical principle? Submission based on the biblical principle is rooted in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 21 to 24. From verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So what we can clearly see from these Bible verses is that submission is all about mutual respect and partnership in marriage. The Bible admonishes wives to submit to their husband totally in everything, even as Christ is the head of the church and the church is submitted to Christ. So also the man is the head of the family and the wife is expected to submit to her husband. So we can see that it is expected of every wife to submit to her husband totally in everything. The Bible does not even pinpoint any area at all. The Bible does not say cook his food, wash his clothes, because it's possible for you to cook his food, wash his clothes, clean the house and not be submissive to that man. It's possible for you not to submit your will to him, even when you do all of these domestic things. Yes, like I said, all of those things are nice and they are good because a man who has gone to work, returning back home, expects that at least he gets a cozy home, you know, to relax, to eat, rest from the work of the day. So that is all Okay in itself, but that is not what submission is all about. The Bible talks about mutual respect because in verse 21, the Bible says submitting yourselves one to another. So this is not even just about the woman alone. Okay, before he went on in verse 22 to say wives, clearly stating it that wives submit yourself to your husband. In verse 20, in verse 21, it says submitting yourself one to another. So as a man, you also need to, now I'm not going to use the word submit, but you're, you're like the driving force in this case. You have to create an environment to enable submission. And that takes me to the third point, which is how can you effortlessly get your wife to submit to you? Everything you need for your wife to submit to you is there in the Bible. The Bible is so complete, like the Bible is so interesting and so complete, and it makes a whole lot of sense. Because apart from being a Christian, you know, apart from being a Christian and of course being educated, sometimes you don't just look at things and run with them. Sometimes it, these things need to make sense to you. And to me, this makes a whole lot of sense. The Bible says, submit your husband in everything, just as the church is submitted to Christ and Christ is the head of the church. So also the husband is the head of the family. So in a nutshell, it means that you as a husband, you need to be the head of the family. And how can you be the head of the family? By being a leader. That is just it, by being a leader. Now the big question is, how can you be a leader? There are characteristics of a leader. I'm going to be mentioning some of them. Because you have to put yourself in that position where you'll be able to earn that submission. And one of the characteristics of a good leader is that you need to be able to communicate. Being able to communicate your feelings, your desires, your whatever it is, 
being able to communicate you know efficiently is one of the characteristics of a good leader apart from that you need to have vision now you cannot be a leader and head of a family if you do not have vision you can't just exist you need to have a vision for your life a vision for the family the wife is supposed to be your support she's supposed to just be like behind you like ah baby be behind me, watch my back, I'm going to be in front, watch my back. It's like going to war. And then when you when people when soldiers go to war, I don't really know much about wars, okay? But I know that when soldiers go to war, there is always someone at the front and then there are others behind. And that person who is at the front is always the leader. So he's there at the front because he has a vision, because you know he gives the command and those at the back follow. So you need to have a vision. Your wife is supposed to be there and be your support system and watch your back. So if you do not have a vision, what is she exactly going to submit to? Because having empathy is something that is also required of a leader. You need to have empathy, especially when it comes to your wife. You need to be able to feel her pain sometimes. Put yourself in her shoes and understand things from her own perspective. Letting her know that, yes, baby, your opinion matters. And I believe that you have a say in this thing, even though it's not like you're taking instructions from her, you know, just like bringing things to our attention for being decisive. How can you be a leader when you are not decisive? You're supposed to take stands in situations and just be decisive. This, this is not me saying you should be authoritative or, you know, you should be commanding, but you should be decisive when it comes to some matters. There are things that you need to stand your ground and say, this is it. Because when it comes to the household, you know, there are things that we know that everybody knows that, yeah, a woman will take care of these. A woman will just, you know, she can choose the house, choose the color of the pants, the color of the blinds. All of those stuff, you know, most men won't even bother. You know, they're like, mm, it's your thing. Just do your thing, baby. I'm okay with it. But, but there are things that you need to be decisive on as a man. Okay, you can't just leave it vague and say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I think. No, you need to know what you think. That is part of being a leader. Because if you're a leader and you're not decisive, it means that anything is going to be happening in your camp or anything can go, anything can happen. Imagine people going to war and then the leader is in front and then he, all of a sudden he's quitting and he's running back. You know, you can't be a quitter. You have to, in being a leader, you have to be resilient. You have to be, you have to chase, you chase your goals and you don't look back. And your wife needs to see confidence in you. These are things that wives submit to. I cannot just submit to a guy who just stays at home all day lounging and scrolling on his phone watching Instagram reels and TikTok reels and all of that. These are real things that wives submit to. So we need to stop looking at submission from this perspective of yeah, she needs to like be a domestic slave or she needs to cook my food, raise my food, prepare my bed, rub your back when you come out from the bath and you know. I don't know whatever that is not what submission is all about. You need to like be a man of substance. Be a leader. Be the head. The Bible says you have to be the head. So if you're not being the head, do not expect any form of submission. You have to trigger it. It is in your hands. If I'm behind you, you're my husband and I'm following you. If I need to submit entirely to you, then I need to be confident that you're not going to goof. Even though you're a human being at the end of the day, but I trust you because you're confident. When you say you're going to do something, you do it. That is what being a leader is. Also, you need to be a source of inspiration to your wife or standard people around you. She needs to look at you and see the, the way you treat other people around, the way you treat people in the society, your closest community, you know, all of these things. These are the things that are going to make her either submit to you or not submit to you. So if you embody all of these qualities, what woman would not submit to you? I mean, you're hardworking, you're confident, you're, you're a source of inspiration, you have vision, you have respect for your wife, you are not lazy. What woman would not submit to you? So you need to create an environment that would enable this submission to come true. That is just the way it is. So mutual respect and partnership is what really, really fosters this submission we're talking about. And remember, women are incubators. We are wired to receive. When we receive, we incubate and then we let out. For example, if you give a woman semen, to you it's just fluid. You just give her semen. And then the next thing she gives you a baby. Sometimes she gives you babies. 
give a woman a house, you buy a house, and then she makes it a home. Because in no time you see your children surrounding your table, you see there's so much warmth in the house, you come back home and you don't want to leave. That is how women are wired. We are wired to be incubators. We receive and we give back. So you have to be careful what you are giving, what energy you are giving, because you're definitely going to receive back. And most times when you're receiving it back, it's not going to be in the same proportion to what you gave. Okay, it's mostly going to be double or times 10 of what you actually give. Alright, so you have to be careful of the energy you give out and the things you give out. If you're a leader, if you're someone who is a leader and you're truly the head of your family, you would never have issue with, there is no question about submission. It's not going to come up in your conversation because she's going to effortlessly follow your lead. It is only when you fail to lead that she won't be able to submit to you because now she doesn't trust you. She doesn't understand your direction. There is no vision. There is no, there is no vision. She doesn't know where you're going to, so she doesn't know what to submit to. She's now scared and she's holding back because she doesn't know where you're going to. So take your time and go through the Bible, read the Bible, and then look at yourself and outline all of these qualities of a leader and see the areas in which you're lagging behind and try to pick up. In no time, you realize that if you have issues of, or if you're the type that is always saying, my wife does not submit to me, she doesn't respect me, she doesn't do this, you realize that you stop seeing all of that because you would have stepped into that role of a leader, that role of being the head. And once you're the head, there is nothing that is going to stop submission coming your way. So like I said, everything you need for your wife to be 100% submissive to you is right there in your hands. Show her that you can be a leader. Show her that you can be the head of the family. And you would have her loyalty, her commitment, and of course, total submission to you. Thank you for tuning in. For those seeing my face for the first time, my name is Chinwe. And on this channel, I just talk about my opinions, my beliefs about life you know in general about business marriage relationship you know personal growth and most of my beliefs are inspired by the bible let me know what you think about this video drop a comment let's share let's communicate let's hear from you and you know some other people would learn from it thank you so much once more for watching if you found value in this video give it a like subscribe if you haven't done so yet stay blessed as always and i'll see you in my next video bye